Hi folks, it's good to be with you. This is Jason. Love to everybody out there. Uh, every blessing. And uh, you can get me at my website, jasonbirdspreacher.com. And uh, I'd just like to talk about uh, my debate with Adin Rash Rashid, who's a Muslim academic and historian. And I had a debate with him on the violence of Islam. So I'm going to pray and then ask the Lord's blessing. Father, I come before you today. I confess my sin and my failure and the weakness of my heart. Father, please forgive me any sin in my life. I acknowledge my need of you and I pray that you bless this video for your glory. Fill us with your Holy Spirit today, Lord, in your name. Amen. And bless this video to our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, I just want to talk about Hyde Park generally, uh, my thoughts about it, the visit. Um, a big shout out to a guy called Jason, he was down there, met me, and Jay, thank you so much bro, he, he was such a blessing to me, real encouragement to me. Uh, I, was, I think I was a little bit dehydrated, he made sure I had water, and we went for a meal and we had a blessed time, and he really encouraged me that day. And he defended me and protected me when uh, a guy was being violent to me, uh, when Muslims were mocking me, he protected me. So, Jay, thank you very much and thank you for your support, bro. You're a, you're a great blessing. I want to also thank all the people that came up to me and shook my hand and thanked me for the videos that we've been making. So, thank you very much for your support and encouragement. I want to give a big shout out to Soku Films for their team, for Bob the Builder and uh, so the Soku guys. Thank you very much for your support and you're doing a great job and we're praying for you here. I also want to give a shout out to Daniel, Godwin, Hatum, Lizzie and the DCI team. Uh, we love you, we're always praying for you and you're doing a great work so God bless you. I want to give a shout out to all the preachers down there. We do pray for you, we do support you here in Manchester and uh, we, we're rooting for you every week. We can't be there every week. But we are praying for you and, and supporting you in prayer. I just want to say that if you are a Christian pastor, a leader, or a Christian with the ability of studying and doing apologetics and preaching the gospel, to consider going down to Hyde Park and developing teams down there to spread the gospel. Because Hyde Park is a strategic place, not only for reaching the UK, but also for reaching the world. And it's a space that Christians have vacated. We need to go there and uh, use the opportunity to evangelize and spread the gospel worldwide. So take camera teams, people who can debate, and use that space for the glory of God. The Muslims are doing that, but it's time that we did it more. Um, I want to say there's been a big change over the last year concerning the Muslim Dawa teams. They're not as confident now. They've been broken down quite a lot by the Christian apologists and uh, they're on the back foot. So that's glory to God and glory uh, to Father, Son and Holy Spirit, these three are one. And we thank God for what he's been doing and uh, we appreciate everybody who's been involved over the last year to really uh, put the Islamic Dawah teams on the back foot. So well done everybody. And we give glory to God. Um, a couple of highlights when I was down at Hyde Park. Uh, some guy had mental issues. Screaming and shouting. Physically abused me. Uh, police did nothing about it. I think the police need to uh, really work on doing the job at Hyde Park properly. Um, I was punched by one Muslim youth. Uh, I was slapped by one Muslim youth, uh, police were not watching, police were not doing the job, so I think there's a bit of a lenience towards people down there who, who can be violent and I, I don't see the reasoning or rationale in it. Uh, I think that uh, the police need to do the job properly, uh, so I have a complaint there. So if anyone knows the police officer down there, pass on this clip to that police officer. Um, there was actually a guy punched by a Muslim guy 
uh, on the Sunday, police officer banned the guy who did the punching for a year. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. I think if you're violent, you should go through the courts and you should be prosecuted. A ban for a year is too lenient for punching someone in the face, just indiscriminately. So the police need to do their job properly. Okay, um, so a couple of highlights. We I was, we were doing Christian worship and uh, Muslims were freaking out while we were worshipping. Uh, they just couldn't cope with that. That was amazing. Um, Muslim youth found it very difficult to answer questions about uh, Muhammad marrying his adopted son's wife. They were quite shocked and couldn't deal with the questions I was giving them. Um, I asked Hashim to debate me on the Sana manuscripts. Uh, he wanted his, the Islamic scholar that I was mentioning, um, Shahid Salim. Uh, that's the article I wanted to discuss with Hashim. I followed him all around the park. He threatened me to form the form the police. This is a very aggressive man who challenges Christians uh, very aggressively, follows them around. Uh, so I gave him a bit of his own medicine. He didn't like it. Uh, but all I wanted to do is debate all day. I prepared to debate on has the Quran changed. And I, and I prepared studies on the Sana manuscripts and various ancient Qurans. Um, I've got my notes. Let's get my notes. So, um, um, I got information on the Sana manuscript, Dr. Gerd Purin, Purin uh, he says all, all these parchments and papers of any Quran manuscript, yet more than half of the text is ambiguous letters which need diagrammatical marks of under, understanding, adding vowels help correct mistakes, it includes author, orthographical changes found in geographical tradition schools, many deviations are not mentioned in later literature. The Sana palmacist using ultraviolet light, we find a Quranic script written and washed below that of the existing script, script defector. This is the first evidence we have an ev evolution in the Quranic text in one manuscript. And I was using Muslim scholars, not Christian scholars, and he was moaning, oh, you don't know Arabic, which I pointed out to him, he doesn't know Greek or Hebrew. And I have information here on the top copy Musaf, uh, the Sama, the Samark and manuscript, the Hosseini Cairo manuscript, the Paris Petrobolipotamus uh, manuscript. And I've done study on, on using Muslim scholars to show that the Quran's changed, that the Quran that we have today is not the same as the Quran. Uh, in these ancient manuscripts and I had done a lot of research, a lot of scholarly study on this. I had tons and tons of scholarly information, primarily from Muslim scholars and uh, non-Muslim uh, in the park, non-Muslim apologists, Mansur saw me, Adam Rashid saw me, Ali Dawa saw me, Mohammed Hijab saw me that day, Paul Williams saw me that day, Hashim saw me that day and they wouldn't debate me on on this issue and loads of Muslims wouldn't debate me and if I brought stuff up the Muslims just said oh it's internet scholarship but it wasn't it was the best cutting edge scholarship from Muslim scholars and they just wouldn't deal with it so I followed Hashim he was upset about it but it exposed him that he, he how, how terrible he is and dishonest he is in debate now Later on, I, I got into a debate with uh, Dr. Uh, Adnan Rashid. Now, he is uh, a very accomplished debater. He is uh, a very able erudite scholar and a historian. And um, one of the most scholarly uh, 
people, in Muslim people in Hyde Park. And there was a big crowd around him. And uh, Soku Films, one of the members there, got into a debate with him. But it was just a, a little talk about this issue of Islam is violent. And I walked over and the, child, the crowd cheered and wanted me to debate him. So I didn't ask to debate. Uh, I was invited and I hadn't got any material really prepared so I like to have material prepared but I had um, what I did have on me was uh, this paper uh, and you can google it you can actually google it uh, what you need to know about Muhammad so I had this paper just called PDF what you need to know about Muhammad and uh, it has uh, information here from the earliest source of uh, Islam about Muhammad. And so I thought that would be enough to hold the line in the debate. So I said, I'll debate you. Okay, so, so I want to go through the debate because in the debate, I treated Adam Rashid, Dr. Adam Rashid, with the utmost respect. I never butted in. I gave him loads of time to talk, ample time. But he spoiled my presentation on a number of occasions by butting in, trying to change the subject, and really was very rude, attacking me as a person, saying a number of rude things to me. But I was kind and I was gracious to him. But I didn't think he gave me a fair opportunity to debate him properly. And I gave him an opportunity and, and I was fair with him in debating me. So I think it's only fair that I go through the debate with you and give you a fuller exposition of my arguments and what I was saying and rebut some of the arguments in more detail what he was saying. Now I also have all my scholarly notes and information now at two hand where I can give you more detail and arguments as we go on. So what are in the debates I I read this paper, bit of paper, and it says the following are taken from the earliest biography of Islam, it's Prophet, written by Ibn Ishaq and published in English as The Life of Muhammad. Here are but few examples. Muhammad ordered the murder of Fatima and her friend for singing songs of satire against him, page 551. Another young girl named Sarah was trampled to death mercilessly by a mounted soldier dispatched by Muhammad after she insulted him, page 551. Asma bint Marwan was slaughtered by one of Muhammad's soldiers solicited by him, a crime, writing poetry that insulted him. She left behind five orphan children. His comment after hearing the deed was done, two goats will not butt their heads together at her passing, page 676. Muhammad gave thanks to Allah when the head of Abu Jala was delivered to him, his crime mocking Ibn Masood, one of Muhammad's earliest converts to Islam, page 3 or 4. Al-Harith B. Sawayed was considered a hypocrite after initially embracing Islam and later rejecting it. For this, Muhammad ordered Umar to kill him if he found an opportunity to do so, page 384. So... I was happy with this because um, Adam Rashid was going on about politics, the Americans, and encouraging a war against the Palestinians, etc. And he was going all over the place about history. And I said to him, well, let's get to the root because the root will produce the fruit. So the root is either Islam or, or Christ. And I wanted to show the root of Islam was violent at its very core in Muhammad. And I was using the earliest sources that we have. Now he then countered me and said, well, that's internet scholarship. Now what he didn't, and, and so then he said, I can give you even better things, let me help you. And he thought he was being clever. Uh, there are 600 people got killed by Muhammad in, in a battle, fighting men. And, uh, but your Old Testament is worse than that. Now the reason why I didn't go to the hadiths, I know all about the, some of the battles and the violence that Muhammad did through the hadiths, is that 
what he didn't know is I had been studying this PhD uh, by uh, Shahazad Salim and uh, his PhD on the Quran um, this is a Muslim scholar I was quite shocked to find that in, in the Hadiths in Bukhari I was quite shocked to find out that uh, the earliest uh, the sources from Bukhari are 200 years after Muhammad but even then Bukhari's first volume of Bukhari that we have is in the 11th century so we have what Muhammad in the mid 600 so you have uh, 700 800 900 10 11 500 years after Muhammad we have the first volume of Bukhari now it's nine volumes and we have another couple of hundred years before we have the full nine volumes so that's like five six seven it's like seven to eight hundred years after Muhammad we have historical data about Muhammad from Bukhari now that that is not serious historical source that is not really source material as a Western academic and historian that you can really take seriously that's why the German school of scholars in the 19th century I think it's Nordak and a number of others absolutely dismantled is Islamic scholarship concerning the hadiths that they're absolutely a disgrace historically so I wasn't going to I, I didn't feel comfortable and think it was wise to embark on using the hadiths from a western scholarly point of view I thought it was wiser to use uh, the life of Muhammad by Ibn Ishaq because even though it was the earliest and he is not seen as a, a, a very accurate his, uh, biographer I'll be honest about that but it's a lot lot better than Bukhari who comes like the first volume like right? at least five to eight hundred years after Muhammad and I was using the criteria of embarrassment in Western scholarship you have the criteria of embarrassment if your biographer writes material that is uh, he's on your side but yet he's writing bad material about you it's probably likely that it's true so I thought from a Western academic point of view it was much much better than delving into the hadiths now he he quoted he, he, he talked about the hadith and about some battles but I pointed out to him and in the debate it's probably missed by people but I pointed out to him that he never quoted a specific hadith he never named any hadith specifically the number of it the chapter or the number thirdly secondly he never gave the chain of narration which you need to prove that the hadith is accurate because all these hadiths have liars within the chain of narration but he didn't give us the chain of narration to back up so he didn't give us the number of the hadith he didn't give us the chain of narration of the hadith and then in hadiths you have textual variants he didn't discuss any textual variants of the hadith so when he was talking about the hadith he, as a historian he was a million miles away from his academic ability he was not dealing with it in an academic way but what I had provided is a specific biography with specific page number. I give detailed material with specifics in it. And he didn't give any specifics about his, uh, his uh, rhetorical stuff that he was saying about the hadiths. So and he accused me of internet scholarship. But I'd, I had read over 100 pages of Ibn Ishaq and was well aware of the Muslims world's view of Ibn Ishaq and the reason why the Muslim world is doesn't like this first biography of Muhammad is because it has the satanic verses in which shows Muhammad is a false prophet who actually uh, says worship three gods and then acknowledges he's, he was tricked by Satan that's in the earliest biography that's why the Muslims don't like Ibn Ishaq your first earliest 
biography. Okay. So his retort was, your internet scholarship, you just got a paper. Unaware that I've been engaging in academic scholarship on PhD on the Quran, on the Quran by a Muslim scholar who, who goes into painstaking detail about scholarship on hadiths and how we use hadiths to interpret the Quran. Unaware that I'd done scholarship on the life of Muhammad by Ibn Ishaq and studied his methodology, Ibn Ishaq's methodology in her historical method. And like I said, I would agree that he was not a very good his, uh, biographer. But like I said, it's much better, and I'm using a good criteria, much better than the nonsense of some of these hadiths that he never gave any specific information. Now, I just want to go into this a bit about Muhammad. Here we have Muhammad organizing assassinations. And when you look at Muhammad's whole life, um, you have, like, for example, in Quran, you look at uh, the Quran 434. 434. Men are protectors of women because God has made some of them excel others because they spend their wealth on them. So various women are obedient and guard in the husband's absence what God would have them guard. As for those whom you apprehend infidelity, infidelity adomish them, then refuse to share their beds and finally hit them. It's put in lightly here, but it's not there in the Arabic. Hit them. Then if they obey you, take no further action against them, for God is a high and great. So that is in Surah 434. So here, Muhammad is seen to be violent towards women. And you find um, in Sahih Muslim, this is in the, in the hadiths, if they want to stand on the hadiths, here we are with the hadith, Sahih Muslim 422.127. He struck me on the chest that caused me pain. This was, uh, this was Aisha, his wife, said that Muhammad struck him on the chest. Sayyid Muslim 93506, Abba Bakr slaps a woman and Muhammad laughs. Abba Dawah 2142 says, uh, don't, don't ask about beating a wife. In other words, just go and beat them. Um, Sunan Ibn Majah 3.91986 Don't ask a man why he beats his wife. This is what Muhammad said. And then we have Ibn Ishaq uh, source as well. So, um, so these are hadiths which they want to stand on. Uh, but they'll say that hadiths are not authentic now because anything that shows Muhammad to be false, they'll say it's not authentic. So that was some of the hadiths, some of the Quranic verses. There is sexism uh, in the Quran from Muhammad, uh, Surah 411, uh, one man equal to two females, etc. So we see there that Muhammad is violent to women, assassinated people, he was a false prophet, he had no assurance of salvation in Surah 33.21, Surah 46.9, uh, we read, I suppose perfect model of behaviour for all people, one would think Muhammad would qualify for paradise without question, yet Muhammad had no assurance of his own salvation, Surah 46.9, herein is a contradiction, if every Muslim to model his life, her, his or her life after the Muhammad to please Allah, yet Muhammad had no assurance that he would see paradise. Muhammad was, uh, he didn't have assurance of salvation, he was mentally unstable. Um, his initial encounters with Angel Gabriel left Muhammad fearful and shaking. He went into an uncontrollable trance during which Gabriel told him to recite. When he replied that he could not recite, Gabriel pressed the breath out of him until he nearly passed out. 
Chamberlain Muhammad ran home to his wife Kahajan and said, Woe is me, poet, or possessed, and Muhammad thought he had been visited by a demon. Contrast that with the Bible in Daniel 8, 15, 17. Daniel was initially afraid, but Gabriel calmed him. Daniel 9, 9 21, 23. Gabriel tells Daniel he is greatly loved. Luke 1, 13. Gab Gabriel tells Zechariah to not be afraid. Luke 1, 30. Gabriel tells Mary to not fear, for she is a chosen of God. So we see a violent man who beats wife, encourages beating wives. We see him encouraging from Ibn Ishaq assassinations. He was uh, a person who didn't have assurance of salvation. He was a person who uh, was mentally unstable. Uh, he was tricked by Satan. Have you considered Al Latat, Al Uzza? And Manat, the third one, these are high flying cranes whose intercession is approved. This was the original text which comprises Surah 53 19 22 in the Quran. So, this is the satanic verse which is worshipping three gods. Seeing Muhammad acknowledge the gods, also persecution for the Meccans subsided for a while. That is until Gabriel appeared to Muhammad and said, what have you done, Muhammad? You have recited to these people something I did not bring from God. Satan gave you those words. And so according to Deuteronomy 18.20, Muhammad is a false prophet. And then, so he, he, he worshipped false gods. And then uh, God said, you know, you've been tricked, but it's okay. Um... He had penchant for receiving revelations just in time, revelation to absolve him. And the Quran allows a man to have up to four wives, Surah 4 3. But when Muhammad had more and was questioned, he received convenient revelation, allowed himself alone as many wives as he wanted, Surah 33 50. So. So we see he's a violent man, he's an unstable man. He's a man who's a false prophet, and because of that, that fruit is bad fruit. He also married his adopted son's wife, Surah 33, 37. So again, revelations were coming convenient to, to fulfill his sexual desire. So when you put all that together, when you compare that man to Jesus Christ, the Son of God, there's no comparison. Um, you know, there are lies within the Islamic tradition about Muhammad. Uh, in Surah 7, 157, it says, Those who follow the Apostle, the unlettered prophet, who they find mentioned in their own scriptures, in the law and the gospel. Surah 7, 158, Say, O men, I have sent unto you all, as the apostles of God, to whom I belong, the dominion of heaven and the earth. There is no God but he. It is he that give both fire life and death so believe in God and his apostle the unlettered prophet who believed in God and his words follow him uh, so they may be guided so the Quran, the Islamic tradition is that he, he was a person who couldn't uh, read or write but if they want to camp on the hadiths Sari Bukhari who uh, Rashim was quoting says says uh, once the Prophet wrote a letter or had an idea of writing a letter, the Prophet was told that the rulers would not read letters unless they were sealed. So the Prophet got a silver ring made with Muhammad Allah's apostle engraved on it, and if I were just observing its white glitter in the hand of the Prophet. And there's a number of hadiths that show that Muhammad could read and write, yet the Quran says he was unlettered. And then if they want to camp on the hadiths, in Bukhari, you, you see uh, the, in the first uh, couple of chapters, uh, the verse where it says in the Quran, there are no partners with God. That verse was, was actually in the context of war because um, it was sent with a letter to a specific city. Just read the first couple of chapters of Bukhari and you'll find this information. And uh, the... There was a letter written to a city that if you don't acknowledge God as one and uh, turn away from partners, 
then we will invade your city. So that verse uh, about theology of who Jesus is, according to the Muslims, was actually a verse of violence in, uh, used as a, a weapon of war. So if he wants to, if Adam Rashid wants to camp on Bukhari, then uh, that's really, really damning information. Really, really damning. Much more damaging than anything that he, that Rashim said about the killing of 600. We're talking about a verse that is theological about Jesus not being the Son of God. That was used as a verse of a weapon of war to go into cities and say, if you don't denounce Christ 